uh, session, I invite uh, Professor James. James, you're there? You have to unmute. Yeah. Dr. James, thank you very much for joining. My pleasure. Um, thank you for invo <laughs> involving me in this uh, session. Yeah, thank you. Sorry for the little bit of delay, uh, but uh, we are very happy that you are joining. And uh, Professor P.C. James is um, um, presently the Principal Officer, Insure, Insure Edge, Author, Mentor, Arbitrator. And um, um, he's the Director, Insure Edge, and Executive Director, Non-Life for IRDAI, and General Manager, Agricultural Un Insurance Company of India. General Manager for United India Insurance Company Limited and the Chair Professor National Insurance Academy. Uh, as you see here, he is very senior person who has contributed his entire life for this insurance sector. He has written many books and he is in the uh, lot of boards and uh, IRDA. I is one of the important where he has contributed uh, very much. So we are very much honored, uh, Dr. James, for uh, joining us. And as you all know that um, um, bariatric surgery is now, uh, now covered under health insurance. So we all, everybody worked hard for this to be covered for last many, many years. Dr. Ramesh knows, Dr. Randeep knows, and uh, Ethicon also worked very hard. And um, IRDA uh, said in 279, 2019, that the uh, bariatric surgery will be covered under health insurance products. It was applicable to all individual, family, group insurance, corporate insurance, all the things. And it became effective from 1st October, 2020. Um, Dr. James, you want to tell something about IRDA? Yes, sir. IRDA is the regulator for the insurance sector where its main uh, area is to guide and uh, make insurance companies comply with what is required for public good. The most important objective of IRDA is policyholder protection which means policyholders should be given their due, should be given necessary insurance coverage, et cetera. And they monitor that. They also monitor the intermediaries, but they don't monitor customers, means that is not their uh, job. So in the process of this, however, they keep taking feedback from public. And one of the important uh, feedback they took and where I was also involved is in the implementation of uh, exclusion clauses. Previously, exclusion clauses could be very, very uh, unique, each company following its own practices. But then that was not found good for customers because there was an utter confusion. You take a policy and you land into trouble because this insurance company has some hidden clauses somewhere, which is not part of the usual clauses. So they standardized the exclusion clause. And in that process of exclusion clause, they brought in the coverage of insurance. So insurance coverage for bariatric is not in the main, though it is... Uh, implied in the main, but it is specifically covered in the exclusion clause. Right? And the exclusion clause is there before you. Okay, thank you very much. I think the process has become very transparent now with the IRDA everything. And um, if you see who are all eligible as per the IRDA, it is that um, you have to go through this very carefully. Surgery is to be conducted upon the advice of the doctor. That's why I have not changed any of the words in this. So surgery procedure conductor should be supported by clinical program or yeah, clinical protocols. So this is again very important. We have to follow the protocols and the guidelines. The insured patient has to be 18 years of age or older. So um, 18 years of age is the criteria. And next, we have the important body mass index criteria. It should be greater than or equal to 40. So if it's 39 or so, it may not be covered. 40 and above, it is covered, even if there are no comorbidities. And greater than or equal to 35 in conjunction with any of the following severe comorbidities. 
following failure of less invasive methods of weight loss. So this is also important that patient should have tried some other less invasive methods of weight loss before coming for the surgery. Obesity related cardiomyopathy is a comorbidity, coronary heart disease, severe sleep apnea, and uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. So these are all, these are the things which form as the comorbidities for uh, BMI 35 plus one of these comorbidities. These are all included. So uh, James, is there any proof we have to give that the patient has tried less invasive methods or there is severe sleep apnea, uncontrolled, uncontrolled diabetes or anything? Yes, you, the doctor concerned would have to provide or the patient would need to provide the previous uh, history of uh, problems and right. what all was tried. But the best right. thing is to have it collected by the <coughs> surgeon himself. So there's right. a logic to it and you know, uh, questions can be answered later on, the insurance company comes back. But they also have in their panels or they have as employees, uh, qualified right. doctors and they can ask very uh, technical questions which uh, other people cannot answer. Right, right. So I think it's very important when you document that all these things should be addressed in the um, summary what you send to the insurance company that you have, you should record all these things before sending it for insurance, what measures patient has uh, tried now less in non-invasive methods and whether there is any other uh, comorbidities and if sleep apnea, what is the proof, diabetes, what is the proof, all these things. See, we have guidelines from the Aussie, which uh, says this BMI 37.5 without presence of any obesity related comorbidities. So the insurance guideline is 40 and BMI 32.5 with presence of diabetes, any obesity related comorbidities. So I've put it this here that uh, we will be always following this Aussie guidelines, but there is a slight difference between what the guidelines for the insurance we have to follow and also the Aussie guidelines. Uh, Dr. Randeep, you must be getting a lot of insurance uh, coverage. Any input on this? Uh, thank you, Dr. Shivram. So uh, I'm sorry, there could be a little disturbance because now I'm on the move. Okay. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no so, uh, uh, so what has actually happened is that uh, what we've seen uh, post-October 1, 2020 is that we've started getting coverage for, uh, uh, for our bariatric patients. Uh, though, of course, because of the pandemic, the numbers have been uh, fewer than what we were doing earlier. But we started getting coverage. And primarily, we get a coverage for uh, uh, private insurances. So private insurances, there's less of a problem. Even if they send queries to us, we send them the IRDA circular of 2020, and they by and large approve. So right. uh, people having uh, uh, insurances, which, are, uh, which have been there for... Uh, at least four years and beyond, we've not had a problem. Uh, we have got a coverage for them. The ones right. where uh, the government insurances, which are by and large four in number, New India Assurance, uh, National, United and Oriental, uh, there, there is a problem. They take a lot of time. We need to send the IRDA circular. We need to talk to them, even though the insurance have been, uh, the, the person concerned may have an insurance for four years, five years and beyond. Uh, we are getting some of them cleared, but they are few and far. So those, right, right. those numbers are little, but the private insurances, which we were not getting them earlier, these days, there's no problem there. Right, right. Uh, we are getting them quite regularly. Uh, again, um, the criteria is very clear. The criteria is the NIH criteria, which you've uh, mentioned very nicely. It's not right. the Aussie right. criteria. But then Correct. that's fine. That is the same criteria with CGHS as well. CGHS also. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I think this is what we have to keep it in mind. Thank you, Dr. Randeep. Uh, James, anything can be done to improve the government insurance um, uh, accepting quickly and like the private insurance companies? Anything effort has yeah, been put in uh, that? I may mention one or two things here with regard to 
It's a very nice that Dr. Randeep mentioned about four years. There is, you know, in insurance, there's what is called a waiting period. And uh, typically, the bariatric is a sort of uh, elective surgery with uh, history of obesity. So the safest is, as Dr. Randeep said, there's a waiting period in every policy of minimum four years for a pre-existing disease. So it's easy to claim what is older than four. But now IRD has brought in a new measure that after eight years, no questions at all. So if a person or a patient has eight years of insurance, right. including, the, including the sum insured, the insurance companies cannot raise any question about uh, pre-existing or uh, things like that. They have to pay, but though all the clauses get wiped out regarding pre-existing disease. So we should uh, encourage patients to have high sum insured from the beginning. And after eight years, they are safe and you need not worry. But insurance companies, of course, can raise some problem. I mean, but more from lack of their understanding and not from your side. Meaning, after eight years, no questions. But after four years, there can be some question because you know there is something called an insurance and non-disclosure and uh, trying to hide and all that kind of thing. I mean, some sort of issues can arise. So IRD gave up to eight years, but I think this could get reduced as time goes. With regard to government insurance, you know, they have their own group called JIPSA, uh, which is based in Delhi under the Ministry of Finance. It's at the same building where Ministry of Finance is there, right at Patel Chauk. Maybe some uh, doctors who are familiar there can visit that office and make a case there, or by writing to the JIPSA chairman or any of the, all the four CMDs of the companies that uh, uh, this is a fake company now. There is no, no room for you to create uh, problems or delay based on the circular of 11 um, uh, 10 2020 which originally started in 19 as uh, dr shivram rightly said so all the period of hesitancy is over from uh, 1990 all the companies are supposed to launch products uh, including pediatric and from right, 2020 right. no no exception so now more right. than you know, quite a lot of time has passed so you may make a representation either through the OC or whatever, to the GIPSA uh, for chairmen of the insurance companies, and then await uh, their uh, response, and we can proceed from their own to see that they actually send necessary surplus to their uh, offices down the line. Right, right. Thank you, James. That's a wonderful piece of information. So after eight years... So Dr. Shivram, can I ask questions. a question here? Sure, sure, sure. So, Dr. Yeah, so uh, what, what Professor James just mentioned is that uh, uh, he said that uh, eight years is what is the criteria. So anyone who has an insurance which has been in existence for eight years in continuation can now, uh, uh, so if we apply for a, uh, for a bariatric procedure, we should get an approval for that. Is that no, correct? No, yes. you are, no, no, there are two issues. One is the issue is about pre-existing. That pre-existing part will never be questioned. Then there are other issues like, you know, it should be, it should be your reasonable charges, etc. I mean, there are other clauses, but you need not worry about the pre-existing aspect of uh, the problem. Right. Most, of, most of the time, they jump on that. The rest of it is based on your uh, normal practice. If you are charged or the type of city, sex, naturally, a particular level of treatment may be more expensive than in a big class or C-class city. That right. Some queries may arise from that, but it will happen lesser and lesser because the DPS more or less know the uh, the, the, the standard charges, but uh, we cannot say that everything. Uh, some nothing will be questioned. What will not be questioned is regarding uh, the issue of that. This is a pre-existing. Pre -existing uh, some uh, some manipulation yeah. is going on to get a coverage for uh, something which they are not entitled to. Right. Correct. Other criteria thank you should so be much. met. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I think uh, this has been uh, covered by uh, Mr. James nicely. So. Most of the companies have a pre-existing disease exclusion period of 48 months, but some companies have uh, 24 months also. These are the things we have to look into that. I and, uh, one more thing, uh, Dr. Shibram, if you don't mind, uh, you right, right. particularly mentioned individual, group, uh, right. uh, corporate, etc. Now, Most right. of the group and corporate policies, there is no pre-existing condition. So that could be verified. True. Correct. So, particularly corporates, if you get uh, bariatric cases and just ask the patient, is it a corporate insurance and please verify whether you have a pre-existing condition or not. If it is not there, you are, you are, you are in the clear. 
There is no question of invoking that uh, for putting a break on your claim. So right. don't worry about four and eight if it's a corporate, but subject to the patient showing you or confirming that the pre-existing condition doesn't apply there. Right. And in any group, government policy, etc., there is no, no pre-existing condition at all. So I mean, the big elephant in the room is this pre-existing condition, but it may not even apply on day one if it is a corporate or uh, or, a, or a government a group insurance and so on. That need, that, so the worry of doctors that it will not be paid up to four years is also not right. But individual and family insurance, this is very much there. Right, right. So we have to look into the policies carefully. And the amount covered, I think uh, Mr. James also told, and also it depends on how much you have made a policy and how much is covered, whether it is the uh, high amount insurance, all these things. Any uh, feedback on this, uh, Mr. James? There is. Yeah, there are two issues which also need to be checked regarding the amount. First of all, the amount should exceed your normal charges for bariatric along with, you know, there's a pre and post hospitalization insurance also that is expenses before surgery and after surgery also can be covered normally before right. surgery for 30 days, after surgery right. for 60 days. But every policy is likely to have what is called a deductible and a copay. That is a very tricky part of many insurance companies managing this kind of uh, uh, health policies. Uh, deductible is a standard deduction that is say 5% of the claim amount. So if a person has got 8 lakhs and your charge is about say 4 lakhs, then 5% of 4 lakhs will go out of the claim, the patient has to bear it. The right. second is uh, uh, co-pay, normally available in some policies. That's a particular amount of percentage of insurance will be borne by the patient. Sometimes there is 10% of the claim amount, sometimes it's 20% of the claim amount. So this deductible and co-pay will have to be borne by the customer or the patient and that they should be told about it before they enter the surgery because that they have to pay first to you and then only the claim will be, the balance claim will be received. I mean, you will receive the balance claim, but this part will not be paid. So better to uh, look into that before the uh, you know insurance is claimed itself. Right, then there are certain right. uh, uh, items which are not part of the core medical treatment, which I had just clarified, which are uh, unnecessary for the treatment per se, being explicable. A lot of hospitals charge for various unnecessary things like TV or I don't know, all sorts of five-star facilities, which may not be paid as part of the necessary and uh, reasonable cost of treatment. That's right. again a little gray area, uh, it has to be more clarity on it. And it, uh, uh, you know, some hospitals misuse this also and collect more money from the patient. Right, right, right. Uh, see, another thing is uh, a lot, almost all of our patients take post-surgery supplements for a long time. Is it covered in the insurance and whether the patients can claim that? Yes, up to 60 days, it's automatically covered. Then beyond 60 days, uh, okay. a new claim has to arise. It has to be a type of a new claim for which a minimum 45 day gap is required. So a new incident mm -hmm. where it requires some sort of treatment, it will be covered under that under the bariatric uh, case only, but a 45 day a gap between two claims is normally called for. So, right, right. That, that means it's not continuity of you know the, the maintenance treatment. It, it must be a new incident of uh, a treatment which requires hospitalization or any other intervention which is covered in the policy. Okay, so they cannot claim the supplements for lifelong, all those things, because they got operated once for the bariatric surgery. Yeah, that may not be payable unless there's a new incident of treatment. Right, right, right. All right. Um, See, this, this is all uh, very important. Patient is holding an individ individual health policy since few years without any break. Is he, she eligible to be covered from 1st October 2010? That's when it started. So because it is individual health policy, as uh, Mr. James told it, usually the waiting period is between two to four years. So if it is corporate insurance and all, they can claim after uh, one month, is it? Is the waiting period, James? Yeah, it, it is one month or it, even that is where all pre-existing conditions get, there is a, all, all new policies have got a one month waiting period as a starting, starting. but in corporate policies, even that may not be there. Even okay. that one so, month waiting may not be there, but that needs to be verified by the separate, separate policies. Policies, I mean, correct. I think this is very important to understand that the individual health policy and family policy, there is a waiting period. Corporate, 
um, health policy is we don't have much of a problem. And um, there is, if there, uh, Dr. Yeah. Shivram, sorry yes. to interrupt. There is yes. one more thing which is also a caveat here. All right. the policies which were issued uh, before 1st October 2020, a right. lot of them had specific clauses mentioning that any treatment for, for obesity will not be covered. Okay. So all those policies which were issued before 1st October 2020, right. even though they satisfy the criteria of four years waiting for the pre-existing disease and the right. continuity of policy, the right. insurance company is still liable to deny a claim because it is mentioned in the policy. So, that so once that policy is renewed, once that policy is renewed again, now the insurance company, according to the IIDI guidelines, will have to ex remove that clause. Uh, I think please Mr. correct James me, will... Professor James, no, if I'm wrong. They were given one year for this. So after uh, one one twenty, all those clauses are illegal. Yeah. But you may have to fight a little for it. The circular came out in 19, giving the insurance companies one year to change it. So any insurance company just won't change it. Actually, they have breached the IRDA regulation. And oh, is it? from 1, 1, uh, 20, one sorry, one ten twenty, the clause is illegal. Very simple. The Correct. Oh, because I have, I have had a, I have had a couple of patients in which they have used uh, in which they they have used that clause which is there in the policy to uh, to reject claim and i was uh, unaware of this no you must reapply and ask Mr. as dr shivram said maybe you should also <laughs> download a copy of the circular and send it to them no, no. For correct, that is correct. you should all have a copy circular. of the circular along with yeah. your uh, any rejection you should send that no the copy of circular is already there with my insurance uh, people and hmm. this is the first thing that they do even without approaching me once they get a query or a rejection, first thing they will do is there is a pre-drafted reply and a copy of the insurance of the IIDA circular with, with that part, with the relevant part highlighted. This is sent back as a mail, as a first response. But there, are, there is still a lot of resistance, as Dr. Randeep said, in, in some insurance companies, especially the government insurance companies. Yes. But, but I think it is getting better. Yeah, it, is, it has to get better and I suggested you may wish to write to the chairman of the four companies that, and then await their, uh, request them to issue circular specifically, highlighting yes, the IRD circular. It. They have nothing to do but to, uh, you know, insist on their officers implementing the IRD circular, otherwise they can be, and a copy of your letters to the PSUs, I mean, uh, CMDs may be sent to the chairman IRD also, so that they also take cognizance of the bad practices in the market and they can punish or fine or, you know, uh, do other penalty on these companies. That's a very yeah. good idea, actually. Yeah, so, so many uh, of these things have not percolated to the lower level. So they are still in the old mode and uh, they have not changed their thoughts. So that's why the problem comes. So sometimes we may have to educate those people who are sitting there and uh, uh, tell them these are the things which have changed also, I think. That's true, James? Yes, absolutely. Some... See, these yeah. health insurance policies were from 1986. Some people are still having the mental model of 1986 and Correct. these policies have been so dynamic and the involvement of IRDA after 2000, year 2000 has been much more. So, but the people's mindset, particularly in the older, these PSUs are older companies before 1-1-2000. So, they right. sometimes carry their training is sometimes in that old mode. So, you can expect the worst, you know, kind of uh, reaction. Right. Thank you. Any other question? Somebody... Has raised anything? Yeah, so uh, Dr. Shivram, I can just add, uh, I've taken the cue from what uh, Professor James has just mentioned. And right. uh, uh, on behalf of Aussie, we'll definitely write a letter to uh, to this, uh, to, to the GIPSA, which he right. said is in, uh, is in Delhi. So at least uh, take that forward so that uh, at least there are fewer rejections as far as the government insurances go. We'll do that right away. Please yep. put a CC to IRDA chairman and member non-life IRDA. Member non-life IRDA is from the GIPSA only. I mean, she, she comes from that uh, group of uh, selected by government member of... So she's in charge of health. One madam called Alameru. Her name will okay. be in the website of IRDA. You may send her a copy, but original may be sent to chairman also. Sure. That will be, Thank you. That will be very good uh, from us. Yeah. So whenever uh, possible, better to apply through the ca cashless mo mode from the hospital itself. 
because many of the companies are empaneled with if they if they are empaneled hospital so then what happens the documents everything goes perfectly for them to deny will be a little difficult this is true mr james absolutely the ppn yeah. was actually meant and uh, for pediatric without ppn the patient is going to be in big trouble because the amounts are Correct. very large mm. Correct. so normally they should be advised to go to a ppn hospital only unless uh, i mean uh, there is no option only they should uh, go to a non ppn because they will have to pay the cash up front and that Correct. is not the intention of health we are pursuing with the idea that every hospital which is of a particular standard should be paid ppn but there is some Correct. resistance from insurance companies uh, in the practical aspect our intention right. is that all hospitals of sta offering standard care and above would be in in ppn by now but unfortunately that has not happened right right so that's where the reimbursement mode comes if the ppn is not there so that's a little difficult trouble that's why patient should not uh, if they are coming to the ppn hospital they themselves should not apply better to apply through the hospital so the everything will be covered so another questions many people have is whether complications are covered so here also um, it is clarified that complications of the bariatric surgery are covered and um, requiring hospitalization or surgery all these things but we have to inform the uh, insurance company and uh, tpa so it's important and also it depends on the amount they have insured also any inputs on this mr james yeah this is mainly on the part of the surgeon and the hospital to show that uh, the, the logic of it is also uh, i mean it's very clear i mean no uh, doctor on the side of the tpa or insurance company should suspect that this is a manufactured complication it should be a genuine That's complication so for that genuine. the documentation from the doctor side and the hospital is very important and once that right. is there it's fine right so revision bariatric surgery again a lot of we do that bariatric surgery here also it's important i think what i read is about the documentation if you are eligible as per the irda circular and policy criteria then you can undergo the revision of the surgery under insurance cover however such cases depend on the actual case history very important and management of the obesity by the insured insurance policies cannot play claim that arise directly from gross negligence or non compliance of preventive care or advice from the doctors dietitians etc so here becomes very important that patient should follow up with the doctor and also follow all the advice of the doctors and also dietitians and maintain a good record of this so this is what i understood mr james you will uh, enlighten more on this absolutely i mean you are very very right doctor you see bariatric is supposed to be a one one off in the life of a person mostly but then you can see other diseases like heart heart surgeries any number of heart surgeries are covered but subject to certain waiting periods after the earlier surgery and right. the next heart issue may come up or it may be an independent heart issue so similarly here also as rightly pointed out in the Uh, in the in the ppt that if the preventive i mean the post operative care is as per the standard or even better than that and still there is a failure it is not necessary it is definitely coverable as an next incident and payable under the policy right so my sincere request to all the members is that let us be very honest in documenting all the things about the bariatric patient and also our uh, transparency is very very important whether during consent first consultation is very important to document everything and nowadays all it is uh, captured in the hospital information system you can't go and change anything it's a good thing actually but the important thing is we should spend time and document the history examination what all attempts they have done to or lose weight and what is the correct bmi comorbidities as on that date also documentation has become very very important and you can't go back overwrite or anything there should not be any um room for any suspicion from the insurance part department or anything 
So many queries come from TPA or everything. We should send clarification immediately without delay. And we should all take interest more in these uh, insurance patients so that in denial is not much. And this becomes a very successful program. So in this, we want um, uh, more inputs from senior surgeons here also. So most common reasons for rejection is BMI and not mentioned properly, or it is not up to the criteria. Core morbidities are not uh, uh, properly mentioned and not documenting whether patient has failed with other methods of treatment. So inadequate documentation. So if, so anything on this, uh, James, about the uh, documentation, all these things? Yeah, I think uh, what you have just shown is right. Uh, please inform all, in, all patients have overcome that they should have all previous policy copies with them in a file. Right. Because any question can come up, that's at least up to eight years, if not more, because you can be questioned on the sum insured, on the period, on continuity of cover, that cover should not break. If it breaks the pre-existing again, starts as if new, which is again very serious. And then subsequently, when the disease uh, time starts or is diagnosed onwards, then again, the medical record should be very, very carefully kept, including, uh, as rightly said, what happens, uh, did other methods were tried, etc. Those documentation should be maintained by the patient very, very carefully. So if these files are there, then it's very easy to answer any query and also to sh show the logic of the claim that there is nothing, uh, no malpractice, no intention to defraud the insurance company, etc. should come right. out transparently. This is fundamentally based on the documents which you have and which is kept safely by the insured or by the doctor's chamber or the hospital, whichever. So that right. it becomes very simple. Right. So if still, if there is rejection, what to do? That is... Um, so so there as, are, yeah. For rejection, there are two, three. One is uh, there is an... Uh, IRDA website where grievances can be sent to the insurance company that can be sent through the portal of IRDA. IRDA will also monitor that. But again, that has to be logically done because if you simply send a complaint without logic, uh, and the insurance company is supposed to uh, answer to this within one month. And in case the insurance company is still adamant, then there is what is called the ombudsman. In all uh, big cities, the ombudsman office is there. It's totally free. And that can be seen in the website, where is the ombudsman office and it is cost free. The next option is to go to a uh, consumer forum, which is also there in every district with a high amount of power. All this will take a little more time, but uh, it is not that uh, that should be given up. So first step is to write a right. letter of grievance to the insurance company through the IRDA portal. It will go to the right place and they are supposed to acknowledge and deal with and also give a reply. If they are not giving a reply, it makes it easier in the ombudsman get an award in your favor, uh, which is, again, ombudsman should uh, give a response within three months. So right. people in, uh, in Bangalore, there is, I think, Jayanagar, the ombudsman office is there. The website is there. Anybody can use that. And I think now even it can be sent online, the complaint online. because of COVID, etc. So these two are the easy methods of managing a grievance. So that should then get you some solution within six, seven months if the claim is not paid. Right, a genuine right. claim is not paid. Right. Also, our chairman, uh, President Ossie, has also uh, uh, said that he will look into any complaints and he will also help to sort it out if anybody has any problem. So, Obesity Surgery Society of India is also very much involved in sorting out if there are any complaints, rejections, if there are any genuine problems. Yes, since this is a little costly surgery, the right. OSI can have uh, you know link with the uh, head offices of the four companies in due course and with Gipsa and there is something called the General Insurance Council at uh, Bombay, uh, which right. is uh, uh, supervising all the companies. And with the IRD, I think slowly you will have a uh, capability of ensuring that there is no claim problem at all. Right. Okay. Now it's all open for discussion. Anything? Uh, anybody has questions, doubts? Dr. Saurabh, how is uh, Indivar Hospital insurance claims and all going on? And uh, you have to unmute uh, Saurabh. 
uh, yes, sir. Uh, we have, uh, uh, although these because of this the COVID, uh, things have not been very very bright for us. Right. But uh, I think it's, it's it's the same everywhere. The right. uh, the insurance we have a very uh, scratchy uh, you know history of getting approvals. But I think um, after uh, this newer guideline which IRDA has. Um, has been um, uh, up, up front. We have not really had too many problems uh, because most of our patients are from the uh, from the corporate insurances. The gypsa right. uh, gypsa obviously will create problems. We we, uh, we tell the patients beforehand, and most of them get rejected. Right, right. I don't know. Uh, 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 just just one thing I wanted to ask you, sir. Is it uh, uh, the uh, the the criteria of BMI plus you need two comorbidities or it's all of them or it's only one would be uh, sufficient. Any one of them is sufficient. Okay. Any one is sufficient. Correct. Doctor Ramesh, okay. do you have any input? Uh, no, nothing. I'm, I'm fine. It was a very good uh, uh, informative discussion. Thank you. Right. Right. Moin. Anything? Anybody else? Hi, sir. Yeah, Mohit. Hi, sir. Good morning, sir. Insurance working for you, <laughs> sir. From last uh, two years, I right. have four approvals. Right. Remaining everything rejected, sir. I think, I think from last six approved. months, I didn't thought even a single approval, even yeah. though the claims are genuine, right. like all of them are diabetics and insulin and BMI is more than forty and all this criteria meeting all the criteria, still I face rejection. I don't know what is the reason, sir. No, no, no. I think um, that's why I did this session because we should make this uh, program work that insurance should be approved. So yes, I think sir. we'll take all these uh, precautions. It will be definitely helpful. Last week, also one more rejection. <laughs> it's like complete really? continuous uh, rejections. So Okay. We May are I getting the uh, approvals. Yeah. May I say yes. something? I mean, please, sure. from, at least from one one. 110, uh, 2020, please take up these cases with the grievance or with the ombudsman. Don't leave them. Okay, your, sir. I mean, your client, I mean, your patient is losing valuable wealth for nothing, despite yes. insurance. So we can go directly, the patient can go directly to the insurance ombudsman. Yeah, uh, first you can office? go to the local insurance regional office or divisional office where the policy is issued. Okay. And if they don't give a proper answer, then go straight to the ombudsman office, If even personally, despite... Okay. If COVID permits, otherwise online, uh, I think there are uh, now windows open. If I'm not what mistaken. about the previous claims, uh, claims two months back, three months back? And also six, months from, back. Uh, from, uh, six months from October means more than six months now, no? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. October 2020, everything is illegal. I mean, if they reject on the account of pre-existing or any area as such, then yes, the de deficiency in document that they should come forward and tell you what is the deficiency in document. And then you and can rectify that. And one more surprising thing. One more yes. surprising thing is most of them are corporate claims, sir. Uh, then there may be no pre-existing at all. Yes. So, but in corporate also there is one more thing you can make a uh, patient ask the corporate to put a pressure. You know, insurance companies are more careful that they don't uh, displease corporates because the premium is very large. You know. Yes, yes, sir. Patient also can do you know in a similar way from a software company and employee. I even got a claim for bariatric. Before 1 1 October, but after the 2019 uh, circular. Because okay, okay. the 2019 circular says this program starts from October 19, but uh, still the insurance companies have a window of one year so they can reject or approve. Mm -hmm. But after 1 1 20, I'm sorry, 1 10 20, there is no room for rejection on account of any pre existing or any such technicality. Right, sir. John, you have any input? Kanika is there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Good evening. Yes, sir. Yeah, Kanika. So, can you give some input from the uh, industry point of view? Uh, can you introduce Kanika, uh, John? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> Good evening, all of you. Uh, Kanika is our marketing uh, head who is based out of Mumbai. Uh, and she was uh, currently working on all those uh, no, bariatric insurance part. And uh, Kanika, over to you if you have some uh, inputs from your side. 
thank you, sir. Uh, so, sir, um, actually, I do not have any inputs because this has been a learning session for me as well. And but I would say that you know we are closely working it with Professor uh, B. C. James and of course with you, sir. And you know we will come up with solution uh, like in, in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Anything, James? Anybody else wants to speak? Any of our members have any inputs? I would only say that anyone still facing uncertainties can uh, either go to Mr. John or Kaniga and they may take up the matter with me. I may try to see what help we can give. Though we are oh, now constrained by, you know, COVID and all, so the channels right. open with insurance companies are not that much, but let's see what, uh, but uh, it's better that uh, either Mr. John or Kaniga Madam does some there's a, there's a window through them rather than directly to me. Excellent. That will be a wonderful and it will help a lot of people. Uh, there are some questions. Okay. Um, comorbidity is over. Is there a difference in individual insurance versus corporate company insurance as coverage and definitions are different? I think we covered that. Does being overweight count? as pre-existing disease as healthy 30 to 40 percent or in this category yes i think uh, dr prabhu you got clearance all these points dr prabhu any still doubts are there i think we covered all these things uh, you have to unmute uh, dr prabhu Dr. Muralidhar, any questions? Dr. Mahesh? It was a very informative session um, uh, about insurance as well. We have, uh, I, I have got uh, approvals recently as well. Uh, right. uh, so I think things have changed in the last one year. Though my numbers are not very big, but definitely getting approvals. Right, right. So, thank you very much, Dr. Randeep, you are there? Thank you. Dr. Ramesh, thank you very much, Dr. Nanda, and uh, very grateful to Mr. James spending some time with us and clarifying all the doubts. I think uh, it was a very, very uh, nice session that all of us get more clarity on the insurance claim, how to go about it. Uh, thank you very much. When our members have some problem, they will definitely trouble you through Kanika or uh, through John or, Dr. or Bharti and uh, please help them out. I'm sure this will become the norm in uh, future insurance uh, for the bariatric surgery. So it's very important that all of us work together to make it a successful program. Thank you very much. I wish you and uh, your uh, patience, all the best because this is the future. I mean, we need to help society because mm -hmm. bariatric is a lifestyle disease which is sort of unavoidable. So I think you are doing a great service to the, the country. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Obesity is a disease, so we have to treat it. Absolutely. Correct. No, agreed. John, final words from you, then we'll close. Yes, sir. Sir, <clears throat> I take this opportunity to thank uh, Professor James because uh, uh, all the work was JNG has been done so far. Professor James was helping us out through uh, reaching out through IRDA, uh, now meeting up the concerned persons and all those uh, documentation which has been happened so far. Uh, there is a great help which has been done by Professor James. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot for all those things. And uh, right. uh, sir, uh, it's thank you once again, uh, Dr. Shivram sir, for giving us an opportunity to uh, you know interact and take up this bariatric as a bigger session here. And uh, moving ahead, we are, as Kaniga also told that we have uh, bigger plans uh, on the insurance part. And now that is a way forward, as uh, Sir mentioned. Uh, we will, we are continuously working together with you know, uh, greater information and also those rejections which has been happening. We are trying out to, uh, to have a different meetings all together with all the uh, successful uh, bariatric insurance uh, team and uh, no, some concerns somebody has. We will have a uh, roundtable meetings which is coming ahead all the way. So all those meetings has been planned and uh, insurance will be taken up as a bigger uh, factor for uh, bariatric from uh, now onwards. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for giving us opportunity. Right. With those uh, words, I think uh, we'll uh, conclude this session.
thank you very much for attending and uh, making this meeting a good a great success thank you very much thank you all good night thank you stay safe thank you